All right, so we brought this question up to uh, Dr. Mike before the break there about right. Anne Heche. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, tr tragically, it was killed. In 53 this. years old. Of course, uh, it might have been her, her own doing, speeding, and then the fiery car crash. But she was an organ donor. Let's bring in Dr. Mike now. Uh, she was an organ donor, but she had fentanyl and cocaine in her system. Can you still donate? Yes. You can. Yes, not a problem. Now, uh, they are. there is this consideration that, well, people who do things like that might uh, have other risky behaviors because they have hep C and all that. But the bottom line is they test and test and test, and her organs are life-saving. It was a... Uh, you know, trying to make a tragedy into something positive, mm -hmm. uh, that's what she did. So um, I've always been a fan of hers. Oh, Me too. Very yeah. sad. Hard, very sad. Hard story. I mean, and she, was, and she was going fast. I mean, just, just the well, video you, that we saw. Yeah, of, you saw that video. Yeah. It's unbelievable. When is the best time of day to eat food? Right. Apparently, it's tied to, is it tied to, is it better at mental health or is it better, what, what exactly yeah. is it tied to? Well, you are what you eat. That's an old expression. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line, folks, is that there's a new study that shows that you have to have a consistency in the time that you eat. Not so much when, but th there are a couple of caveats. One, if you eat late at night, it's going to affect in a negative way your sleep. Uh, uh, the thing is, if you eat at 12 one day and then you eat at four the next day, mm -hmm. you're going to disrupt your circadian rhythms. And it goes further. It has to do with your microbiome, mm -hmm. the intestinal bacteria, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it also affects things like mood. So okay. it can make depression worse. It can make bipolar disorder uh, uh, worse. Oh, that's what this study shows. Now, intriguingly, uh, they talk about intermittent fasting helping depression. Now, I've been doing it for like almost four years You're still now. doing it? I do it, yeah. It's, oh. it's right. been life-changing for me. So tell me when you eat. I eat dinner. That's it. That's, That's it. it. Yeah. I have coffee and no calories during the day. Now there's hmm. conflicting data about this, but the bottom line is is that there is looking at this article some uh, data suggesting less depression. Now, I make all of you depressed, but I'm pretty happy. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Uh, you know. You, what can so I do? you got up yeah. this morning. Yes. You will not eat anything until what time? Till dinner. Till seven? Seven o'clock? Well, I would like, if I had a life, I would eat earlier in the day, but I tend to eat late, but that's what I do. So you don't get yeah. hungry at all during no. the day? No, no. You just have coffee in the morning. Like I right have now you have coffee? I had, look, right here, see? Currently, Currently caffeinating. caffeinating. <laughs> but I have stevia. I have no, uh, no calories in okay. here. It's just black and... That's it. So how do you train your stomach not to get hungry until 6, 7 o'clock? You should be drummed out of the medical profession. I don't have time. No, there's, there was a big study right before the pandemic in the New England Journal of Medicine that looked at, at intermittent fasting. Now, there was a study recently that showed that there was no difference between caloric restriction and intermittent fasting, but I am a believer, hmm. all right, that intermittent fasting has been held in religious terms for, and, and oh, circles. It's true. For, like that, you fast during a right. religious... Uh, 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 event. You don't eat f over a 16 hour period. Right. Right? Yeah. Now, eight of that, wow. you're sleeping. Right. <laughs> So you, the, the you're having your eight. coffee now, so that's, we're seven, going out right. at 7 o'clock. I drink, I drink plenty so of fluids. So 12, oh, so you I'm drink water. Hungry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, no calories. No calories. Then that, see, I make my liver work for me. Gluconeogenesis. How do you like that, Steve Keeley? For that word that nobody's going to know. Gluconeogenesis. Uh, he hates when I say. Malcolm, do we have time for one more? Please. Yeah, wh which one do you want to do? The, the pigs with the eyesight. So, so, these pigs w were taking their hearts and saving lives. <laughs> saving lives. Poor pigs, pigs didn't ask for this, but uh, no. here we are. <laughs> uh, they're, they're, they, they, they like the attention. They're kind of hams. Yes. All right. Pigs um, uh, saving people's sight. Eyesight, right? Dr. Mike, is that what the new study is? Right. They take collagen okay. from the skin of pigs. And uh, what's really great about this, they, uh, there's about 12 million people in the world looking for corneal transplants. The problem is it's a surgery and it's expensive and there's lack of donors. Mm -hmm. This, however, allows one, it's a simple process, and two, you only have to use 
immunosuppressive drugs for like eight weeks. And so this could revolutionize eyesight for millions and so, millions, especially in countries where they don't have a lot of uh, uh, organ donors. Uh, gotcha. But you're not taking the eye of a pig. No. It's the skin. No, it's the it's collagen. collagen and the skin. Collagen. Yeah, it's not the cornea. It's the collagen. Okay. Yes. And apparently there's, there's some results. Oh, my God, you snorted. <laughs> you snorted. What the heck? Well,